welcome to the session greeting of the day in today's class we are going to talk about the types of forging processes and types of extrusion processes in previous class in the bulk deformation process in the bulk deformation process we have seen about what are the types of rolling rolling and types of forging and types of extrusion these are the various available bulk deformation process to make the changing of shape or reduction volume will be same but we are pressing compression into the plate format or thickness reduction to increase the strength factors so those things can be done by this three rolling forging and the extrusion process now we will continue with the remaining part so these are the various uh, forging process we have to see which are available there now you see the gravity drop hammers and power drop hammers we have talked about with respect to die we have talked about with respect to dies this we have completed we have to see these hammers and what are the classifications here we have, we have already written the classifications of hammer and press you see now with respect to the dropping hammers maybe a drop hammer putting down heavy it is dropped down or otherwise it is off the drop is operated through power drop hammers with respect to power we are leaving and taking out so maybe a drop gravity drop or power drop the impact energy from falling this word falling the drop relates here the drop relates here the falling weight of the heavy ram here like this this ram is there this is the ram this is the ram which is going to fall down this is going to fall down with the heavy ram power accelerated the ram by pressurized air or steam so it is pushed somewhere power operated gravity operated which is we are just opening the weight from the top and it is going to fall over the specimen it is going to fall just like it is going to fall there that's it but in the power with high force manual physical force we are giving with respect to air and stream we are pressing action has been done the gravity force the pressing force is more gravity force normally it fall from height it differs from here it is force less from now it is force increase with respect to air and stream also we can able to push from the top in such a way the force can be increased therefore it may be a gravity drop hammers may be a power drop hammers so the impact energy transmitted through and will to flow to the building also you see here we have kept the specimen and from the specimen is specimen is here let us consider and the ram is falled over there maybe a drop with respect to high fall maybe a power with respect to air and stream we are pressing therefore what happens this force which is to be absorbed by the workpiece to be absorbed by workpiece but also but also this force travel through the workpiece and goes to the building to the surface also it gets it it, it creates a vibrations there like earthquake earthquake when heavy force is applied like a vibration is creating so that is uh, too bad so that is that is one of the disadvantage of this uh, have drop hammering systems maybe gravity or power drop hammers some floors disturbing vibrations are created due to heavy loads applications sometimes this heavy loads may be cracking of the workpiece may also form so this may be a little bit cracking also will be for we not to change the shape not to break the material so that is our intentions see how original how the component is there large component available where the employee is here see the employee is working here and then he is having the setup of hammers here here are the hammers it is going to fall down so such cases we can able to work now it is not a hammer it is a press slowly i am going to press slowly i am going to press apply general gradually automated press actions a mechanical press maybe a hydraulic press maybe a screw press some other classification how i am doing you see so here we can able to understand this is done through the drop hammers so this is what we have seen in the previous image the drop hammers so falling from the top to down 
Now it is not a drop hammer. It is not a drop hammer. It is a screw type I am doing. It is a screw type I am doing. This is a screw type, a threading action I am doing here, threading actions. When it is threaded slowly, the workpiece is pressed. Slowly the workpiece I am doing the load here, slowly. Maybe a screw actions or maybe a crank options can be done, a crank mechanism. Crank mechanism, so when, when one cycle is done, here also one small process actions. One cycle is done, small actions can be done, right. This is all comes under press category. A crank press, a screw press and doing and also maybe hydraulic or pneumatic process. So when the fluid is comes in and out, when the fluid is coming in and out, what happens there? There also, when the fluid is come, the piston is going to press it. The piston is going to pressurize in such a way it can be able to go down. And now, after pressing it, I have to move out. Again, I am sending in the other path. And again, I am sending in the other path. Therefore, again it moves out. So, therefore, some mild pressing I am giving. So, that is the difference of hammering pressing, hammering drop hammers, and the pressing actions of forcing. So, drop forcing. Here is the press forcing actions. Press forcing may be hydraulic press, pneumatic press, crank mechanical process, or screw process, anything, some mild force, slow operation. Here the, here the crack is not formed. Here the force is not transferred to the ground. It is not transferred. It is a hundred percent is absorbed by the workpiece for the work. Then eighty percent is only absorbed because it is a huge load given in a, in a second. There, if I, even while the duration of observing of the workpiece is travelled to the ground. So the forces are wasted. Here the forces are 100% utilized. So this is what uh, we have to understand. So this is uh, about the mechanical process. About mechanical process, hydraulic press and screw process. So convert rotation of drive, mechanical I am talking. Convert rotation of drive motors into the linear motions. And then, and then you see, hydraulic process, hydraulic piston actuates the ram. Hydraulic piston is actuating the ram. Here the screw, screw mechanisms drives the ram. So that is how we understand those concepts. The forging, press forgings. Similar to the drop forging, here in the drop forging we have used a gravity and now we are using, it is used closed dice, it may use a closed die, open die, whatever it is. So, we have classified the forging process with respect to types of die, with the types of forces, maybe drop force or press forging process. So, drop forcing with respect to gravity and the next part is with respect to a gradual press functions that we are going to see now. It is used. It is used in a closed dice. In case of, in case of drop forging, the forces will be supplied as a series of blows. An impact load is going to apply. Impact load is going to apply. Whereas, in this case of force will be, in this case of force will be applied as in the sequence of forces with the help of hydraulic operation. So, in the press forging, in the press forging, it is not belong to it is not belong to gravity. In the press forcing, we are going to apply, we are going to apply with respect to hydraulic press as in terms of squeeze force. Squeezing force. So it will be uniform. It will be in the uniform condition. Therefore, this load 100% will be transferred to the workpiece. In case of in case of drop forcing method, what happened? It has a blow to the force, the impact load is created. Therefore, after within a while of 80% of load is absorbed in the workpiece, and remaining 20% will be transferred to the ground. And this impact load may also cause the cracks. So that two points to be reduced or to be rectified by using this press forcing operations smoothly, the press has been occurred. So it may be for, it may be we can use it for 
hot forging or otherwise cold forging also and it may be useful for it may be useful for open dye closed dye also so likewise we can able to classify this press forging we are classified with respect to forging forces what are the different type of dyes what are the working conditions so this all comes under press forging one have varied press or drop they hot or cold open or close all things will be interrelated because of the continuous action in in the press forging because of the continuous action of the hydraulic press see this hydraulic press the material get a uniform distribution uniform distribution or uniform deformation of loads uniform distribution of the load and deformation also happens smoothly due to the respect because we can able to tolerance can be maintained how we need what 0.5 mm a deviation 0.5 mm with increasing we need accordingly we apply the force from the top slowly and with this increase we can able to stop or when impact load is applied from the top what happens there the tolerance maintenance or with maintenance dimensional maintenance will become critical so that uh, point we have to take here press forging and drop forging you want to compare now what are the points i have told you now i want i want to compare this things how i am comparing you see the entire force is transmitted to the stock or the work piece entire piece is transmitted to stock or the work piece in press forging as it belong to as it belong to hydraulic hydraulics or otherwise screw or otherwise mechanical crank mechanism any whatever it is something it, is to, it should be smooth predetermined force to be slow steady uniform force to be applied there so hydraulic therefore it is uniform what is the drop there on the drop forcing it is a blow force applied it's a drop so that is one so with, with respect to gravity with respect to gravity so the entire force is transmitted to the work yes it is 100% we are using is this one here this 100% is the transmitter so the partial force is transmitted to the building also this 20% is transmitted here here it is 100% is served remaining for remaining 80% is only transferred to the work piece remaining 20% is to the ground so it is uh, something difficult and also it creates crack due to high impact loads the finished obtained in the product is very super fine but the the finish of the production product is not fine not fine because it is seriously blow and therefore it may cause crack because therefore it may cause the cracks so these things are going to be taken care it means whether it should be measured drop or other it should be uniform press forcing can be applicable that is good because crack is forming load is also heavy load is there and that load is not useful because 20% is traveling to ground um, cost effective is not there so we can we have shift here next the general method one is there manual we are used to press forging drop forging everything we have used the automated systems mechanism we have used and one more general normal forging process we have geared is a smith forging process this smith forging process is a very oldest method before the automatic a simple heating on the fire and hammering manually through hand that is represented as smith forging smith forging is worked between a flat or a simple which containing dies by repeated strokes by repeated strokes repeated strokes and manipulation changing of shapes of the work piece through hands also known as a so therefore it is also known as a hand or flat die forging process or flat die forging process so likewise we can able to 
understand this is sim very similar right so you see here how they are doing switch forging we have an anvil at the bottom and the work piece to be bombarded or hammered well to make the other various processes so work is here so some flooring operations they are doing from the top to bottom Smith forging operations contains a few steps in general what we have to follow we have taken we know we are taking the work piece and heating that is general but we have to warm up we have to be heat treated and smooth operation to be done secondary working machining to be done later at later stages and need to be so those things we have to see here so first the common used forging operations are how what are the operations can be done smith forging can be done for bending done for hammering so what are the various methods can be done what are the usefulness application wise what we can do there you see it can be do we can able to do the upsetting process the bending process yes after heating slowly we should bend smith forging operations through the anvil holes we should take and we can we can bend manually physically through hands even the automated system was there we are talking about smith forging normal manual and the punching holes we can do and drawing down setting downs welding can be done we have seen this welding we have taken the two specimens and very well heat treated to the red hot conditions and keeping one over the other and again heating what happens this metallic bonding occurs by diffusion of this two materials by the red hot metal when they force this upright over one over the other so automatically this pressing action takes place between the two pieces so automatically this metallic bonding occurs normally we are not using fillers gases nothing fluxes nothing we have used just we have heated we have kept together and at red hot condition it is readily deformable also and we are hammering and is readily deforming one more one over the other and it is metallic bonding is occurring so the welding can also be done and cutting become easy when it is red hot because it is readily deformable whether we can cut remove or weld or bend it is readily the word readily deformable we should remember so in such a way we can do all those such processes and the flooring treatments hard forging we have talked about this various types maybe you could have seen the hard working process or cold working process so now we are in the discussions of forging it may be hard forging it may be cold forging therefore we want to know what are the advantage and disadvantage of this also you see decrease in the yield strength decrease in the yield strength which means that it is easier to work so what happens here what happens here When high temperature is occurring, it, it also gains the ductile property, and it can able to easily bend. When it is at the room temperature, the material is not possible to bend. But the same material, when it is at red hot condition, it can able to bend. It, it is it is getting ductile property. When at red hot, then we are doing. It means hot working conditions. Undesirable reactions between the metals and surroundings atmosphere. But even though this is getting the ductile property and we can able to bend easily there's a problem at high temperature because we are crossing this we are crossing this critical temperature of the metal therefore when we are crossing the critical temperature there's a chance there's a chance of changing of the microstructure and there's a chance of interaction with the atmospheric at high temperature and the atoms which is in the materials are get energized at high level of temperatures therefore it is also readily getting energized or readily can be jumped from one one system to the other system so that things we should avoid we need heat to, to increase the ductile property but these things are not happening so those things to be taken care to reduce this oxidation effects reduce this chemical reaction efforts in such a way the temperature to be lower and some force to be increased in such a way we can able to avoid elevated temperatures increases the diffusion between metals this is what i have told so through this we can able to do welding process 
diffusion welding plus such things we can able to do. Pores may be reduced in size and close completely during the deformation. So when you are heating, when you are doing the heating process, it is really deformed and we are, we are pressing easily. When we are pressing easily, even though during casting process on the material, if the porous or any atmospheric gases evaluations are there inside the metal, it can be removed by using this pressing action. When it is pressing, the, the gas in between the metals is going to come out. And it is getting easier while during the hot working process due to it is easily pressable when it is hot. It, when this is a solid area, when it's a room temperature, it is not possible to press, not possible to forge, not possible to forge. But the same material when it is kept at the hot condition, it is easily deformable, going to be plasticized. And then if a simple low force is applied, it can be changed, this change its shape. At the same time, when it is pressing action occurred. The, the gases which is involved inside it can easily come out because we are pressing there like a balloon. So likewise this also porousness also can be reduced easily. Undesirable reactions, as I told the chemical reaction takes place, less precious tolerance due to thermal contraction and the warping of the uneven cooling process. So this uh, where it is red hot, force applied, this dimensional tolerance may not be maintained properly too much care to be taken by the skilled workers. So there is a skilled workers needed there. Grain structures may vary through the materials. So microstructural changes because you see this uh, increasing in the above critical temperature. The working hot working itself can work at a great hot condition. So obviously the grain structures will vary. So that related to strength factors. So all these things to be taken care to get good mechanical properties. Cold forging process, it gives a better surface finish. Yes, no chemical reactions, and it also need but more forces needed to even for one mm changing in the dimensions. We will see. Better re reproducibility and interchangeability. No heating required. Main important point: heating not required. That is what is named as cold forging. Increasing the temperature up to one degree from our room temperature itself. That not that much easy. We are putting AC switch and we are cooling the room systems. But the increase in the same again should it consumes power. Those things are unnecessary. So unnecessary means if needed we should do, but it is difficult, it consumes. So it is no heating required, it is a good. No power consumption, it's less cost, those things. But here, here we need more force to deform. The difficulty is there. Directional properties can be imparted into the Material, yes, high higher forces are required. You see, higher forces are required. No heat treatment there eh? is directly relating here. High forces are required to deform. Heavier and more powerful equipment. So therefore, we need a powerful equipment to give this high force. Metal is less ductile, less ductile, less ductile. Undesirable residual stresses are created. When your heating process is done, it should be transferred to the all the workpieces and it should make the change in terms of other one form is converted into other form. We are heating here, it is converted into the change in width. If it is not changing, the heating is generated stress at a concentrated point. It is not permitting. Therefore, stress is created at a specific point. Therefore, stress created in the cold working process. Stress is not stress is a crack initiation point, we know this. Then stress is to be removed when after forging process, when the component is going for the applications, in the applications if the external force is applied, undesirable external force is applied, immediately that is crack insertion point get cracked immediately because that is already stressed during forging process itself, during fabrication itself. After forging, what happens when we are going for the applications? The force applied additionally, though for the stress is not relieved in the fabrication stage itself, it is going to crack. So that is to be avoided, it means here itself we should do heat treatment process. Therefore cold working needed heat treatment. Needed heat treatment. So such cases are to be done. Metal surface must be clean 
and the scale free to be done. So those sorts of things are to be taken care. So the summary. In today's class regarding bulk deformation process, we have seen about the rolling we have seen already. The bulk deformation rolling is one of the category. And then in on one more category we have seen about forging. In forging, I have divided the forging operation into hot and cold working process. Or the forging operation I divided into depending upon types of dies. Here I have again divided the type of die into open die, impression die. Otherwise, the flashless die. This is this forging with respect to hot or cold, forging with respect to type of die, forging with respect to type of force applied. How much it is a force? Maybe a drop hammers. Otherwise, the presses. In this press, we have seen this drop hammers may be a gravity, otherwise the power. This process may be mechanical or maybe hydraulic. Mechanical means with the cam operations, the crankshaft operations. So hydraulic, maybe pneumatic. A screw. So such cases we have divided and we have seen the types of forging treatments. The remaining part of the subject we will see you in the next session. Thank you.